Sneha and Ram are a newly married couple. They want to have kids only after a few years, so they sit with a doctor to discuss the best method of birth control for them. Their doctor suggests Sneha take oral contraceptive pills or simply pills as they are often called. In this video, we are going to talk about how contraceptive pills work as an efficient method of birth control. Contraceptive pills are usually made up of two main hormones. One type of pill contains only progesterone or progesterone derivatives. Another type of pill is a combination of estrogen and progesterone. If you remember, estrogen and progesterone are steroid hormones produced by the ovaries. So, one type of pill contains only progesterone. Another type of pill is a combination of estrogen and progesterone. And these hormones somehow work together to prevent pregnancy from occurring. Before we figure out how contraceptive pills work, let's first take a stroll down memory lane and refresh some concepts about the uterine or ovarian cycle. If you recall from the uterine or ovarian cycle, there are four major hormones involved in it. Let's start first with the FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. In the follicular phase, as the cycle begins, the level of FSH begins to increase in the blood. This acts on the graphene follicle which is present inside the ovary and causes the follicle to mature. Remember that within the graphene follicle is the secondary oocyte which later is going to become the egg. In the follicular phase, the level of LH or luteinizing hormone also increases and in the middle of the cycle, on the 14th day mark, there is a sudden increase in the level of LH in the blood. There is an LH surge. This LH surge causes the graphene follicle to break and the egg to be released from the follicle. This process is known as ovulation. With this, let's take a look at how contraceptive pills work. Contraceptive pills work by acting on the negative feedback loop. Now, what is a negative feedback loop? To understand that, let's first take a look at the pill containing only progesterone. As the level of progesterone begins to increase in the blood as we keep taking the pill, then high level of progesterone is going to act on the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus and is going to cause a decrease in the luteinizing hormone. The progesterone is going to act on anterior pituitary and that is going to decrease the production of LH in the blood. This is negative feedback. An increase in one substance causes a decrease in the synthesis of another substance. So as LH level decreases, there is no mid-cycle LH surge and that way ovulation does not occur. So the graphene follicle cannot rupture without luteinizing hormone and then ovulation cannot occur. The egg itself cannot be released. And if there is no ovulation, then there is no chance of pregnancy. That is how progesterone containing pills work. Now combination of progesterone and estrogen containing pills release estrogen also. And as the level of estrogen increases, estrogen is also going to act on the anterior pituitary and hypothalamus and that is going to decrease the level of follicle stimulating hormone. FSH is also released by the anterior pituitary. So as the level of FSH goes down, the graphene follicle will not mature only. So there is a delayed maturation of the graphene follicle. If the follicle doesn't mature, then there is no chance that ovulation is going to take place because the secondary oocyte has also not matured. So this way, a combination of progesterone and estrogen containing pills work to delay ovulation and to delay the maturation of the graphene follicle. Apart from this, these hormones also make the uterus unsuitable for implantation. Suppose somehow a sperm does enter the uterus and it does enter the fallopian tube and fuses with the egg there. And if the embryo can implant in the uterus, then that will lead to pregnancy. But if the uterus is unsuitable for implantation, then the embryo cannot be implanted and pregnancy cannot happen. So these hormones also work to make the uterus inhospitable or unsuitable for pregnancy. Now that we have understood how contraceptive pills work, let's take a look at some advantages and disadvantages of contraceptive pills. Apart from being excellent methods of birth control, contraceptive pills also reduce the risk of conditions like endometriosis and ovarian cancer. They are highly effective, almost 99% effective, but only if taken daily or as prescribed by the doctor. They are quite easy to take. I mean, it's just a pill, right? You just have to swallow it. And these days, there are several mobile apps that will remind you to take the pill. 
Some examples of contraceptive pills available in India are Saheli and Maladi and they are available free of cost at government health care centers. An amazing thing about this Saheli here is that it's the world's first contraceptive pill that is not made up of any steroid. It does not contain estrogen or progesterone but it still works as an excellent method of birth control. Also, it's a once a week pill meaning it's okay to take it just once a week. There is no need to set reminders to take the pill daily. Amazing, isn't it? There are also some disadvantages associated with using contraceptive pills. Contraceptive pills have side effects like headaches, spotting or bleeding and abdominal pain. They can lead to pregnancy if they are not taken daily. This is quite important because the dosage needs to be taken as advised by the physician. Other medications like antibiotics can interfere with the efficiency of these contraceptive pills. So if you are taking any medicines like antibiotics while you are on the pill, it's very important for you to mention that to your doctor so your doctor can figure out a workaround to make sure that the efficiency of the pill does not decrease. Now whatever contraceptive pill it may be, either progesterone or a combination of progesterone and estrogen, it is very important for you to Take the pill only after consulting the doctor. The doctor will take a look at you, analyze you and tell you which is the best form of pill for you to take and the correct dosage and the correct timings to take the pill. Whether you need to take it once a day or once a week, whether you need to take it for 28 days continuously or take it for 21 days and leave a 7 day gap. Whatever it is, the dosage and when to take can be said only by a doctor. So before taking these contraceptive pills, it's very important important to consult the doctor.